Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday. Did you get your palms? All right. Now, now, you all might need to spread out today so you don't get hit in the eye during worship. Well, if you would um, stand with us, we're going we're gonna to worship. But uh, before we worship, uh, we're going to watch this video on the screen. So just pray that you're blessed during the service this morning. Make sure you do grab a palm. We're going we're gonna to wave them during worship today. Remember, guys, we're a Pentecostal church. This ain't a library, okay? All right? We're worshiping a God that's alive, right? Hallelujah. And, and when we wave the palms, we're identifying with those that were lined on the streets, aren't we? We're identifying with that moment when they saw Jesus riding in. So, that you know, it's, it is a little bit fun for us. But at the same time, there is a lot of truth and power in the demonstration of the palm. So make sure you grab one. Blessings, let's watch this video. The king reigns forever and comes to redeem us. His strength will carry us. He is here, humble but mighty, of sorrow and splendor, entering Jerusalem to save us. He is here. The crowd chants and shouts, proclaiming his reign, honoring the one who overcomes. He is here. He left his throne in heaven, needs no one to guard him. He is mighty and omnipotent. The king is here. In him dwells all treasure. His throne is wisdom and knowledge. His name alone is exalted. The king is here. He makes everything new the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all things. The King is here. He brings no army, wields the sword of the word. He needs no protection. The King is here. He who begins and he who finishes, he who fulfills, the King is here. The one who offers himself, the one who sacrifices it all, who came to usher in the kingdom of God, that king, the only king, our king, he is here. Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you stand if you're able to, if you're not standing already? Yes, Lord, we thank you that you are here. Holy Spirit, we just acknowledge your presence and we, we thank you, God, that we get to celebrate today in Jesus' name.
to face today. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. today in your presence all our fears are washed away because when we see you we find strength to face today it's when we presence all our fears are washed away one more time because when we see you we find strength to face the day, yeah. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna isn't the only name that God has. He has another very famous name. It's called Jehovah. And we're going to learn a new song this morning. It's called Jehovah. And you know, the, Jehovah means the Lord is. And after Jehovah are many other words, right? Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is my provider. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is my healer. Anybody need a healer today? Anybody need a provider? Yeah, well, we worship the provider and the healer, amen? Yeah.
washing over all our sin, the people sing, the people sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna.
Jesus, we come before you today to celebrate this, to wave our palms and usher you in as our king. And I ask, Lord, that you would bless us throughout this week, Lord. Help us just go out and share with the world around us the, the coming of the king, this, this glorious day called Easter, the resurrection day. And I'm just praying, Lord God, throughout this week, I just anticipation of hearing not just about resurrection stories, Lord, but needs being met, Lord God, that people being healed and fills with a boldness, Lord. Lord. This, this helps continue to worship you today in service. And let's just walk with you, our King. I just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before you're seated, would you just turn to a neighbor and say, Hosanna in the highest. Well, Hosanna in the highest indeed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's just such a sweet presence of the Holy Spirit in this room this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He truly is the King of glory. My name is Sean Mulcahy. I'm one of our full-time staff workers here at Evangel Chapel, and I have the distinct privilege of welcoming you to our church this morning, especially those of you that might be visiting with us for the very first time or maybe the first time in a long time. We want to especially welcome you, our visitors, and you, our returning guests. It's such a, a great honor to worship Jesus with you this morning in the splendor of holiness. And uh, if you text this number on the screen, or if you prefer like to actually hand write a card, we have cards in the, in the pews. We would just love to get your information to thank you for being with us connect with you briefly, and find out how we can be praying for you. And uh, hopefully we'll get to spend more time with you as the Lord leads. We have a new ladies Bible study that's going to be starting on April 16th. It's called Truth Filled. 
And uh, these women on Tuesday nights are just gathering faithfully and, and really going after God. And if you feel even the slightest tug on your heart to maybe you're a little bit nervous about signing up and registering for something, or if you don't know how, please let us know and we'll definitely assist you. But sign up and, and get plugged into a group. It's one of the greatest ways not only to grow in your faith, but to grow in relationships with the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you would please turn your attention to the screens, we're going to watch a brief video. Come on. That's not a foul. No. Wings are ready. Hey, uh, let, me, let me ask you something real quick. Yeah. Go ahead and have a seat. Okay. Hey, um, asking for a friend. Mm -hmm. What would a person's general thought be about scheduling or doing something on, 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 a, on a Sunday? I think, uh, generally speaking, most people like their Sundays to themselves. But asking for a friend. Yeah. What if there was something special about the Sunday, generally speaking? Generally speaking, it'd have to be really special. I mean, like a, like a showstopper. Right, right, right. So what if someone was raised from the dead? I mean, would, would that be showstopper enough? What's well, bigger than being dead and then not being dead? Right. Right. Yeah. What, what if said person was the son of God? Go on. And the miraculous act is through him he could save you from save your... Save you from my what? From your... Sins. Oh. Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend, do you think a friend would like to go to something like that on a Sunday morning, if invited? Tell your friend mm. that uh, if he doesn't invite somebody to that, he's probably not really a friend. Right. Right? Right. Right? Right. Hey, <laughs> I'm the friend. It was me the whole time. And the Oscar goes to Meryl Streep. I love her. It's just a question. It's just a question, but uh, I know you have a lot of friends who uh, it would be great if you would invite them to uh, celebrate with us uh, next week, the resurrection. And uh, Jesus is alive, right? Jesus is alive, and he's present, and he's real, and uh, he has wonderful things for us, and we just uh, would love for you to invite your friends to be part of that celebration with us next week. We're going to do a, a little, just a little surprise, just kind of came together last minute. We have um, with us um, a missionary, a Chi Alpha missionary, which is a missionary to uh, the college campuses. And one of the ways that, that he interacts and engages with college students is uh, he makes like specialty coffee. And he loves like real deal coffee, not the Keurig uh, Wegmans brand or Costco brand that we normally serve you on a Sunday. Like, so he's going to set up his little, his little display and we're going to make you some wonderful uh, espresso and affogato. I don't know if affogato, I, that's the thing I told him, that's the only thing I like is like you got to mix some like gelato or ice cream in it. Uh, just as another way to, to show everyone how special the day is, we're just going to do that. So love for you to join us there. And then backing up before that Friday night, uh, this Friday, Good Friday, we um, will have a service here at 7 p.m. Um, each of our campuses will join together uh, Friday night, 7 p.m., as we uh, take that time to pause and, and share our, our, just take the moment to reflect and honor what Jesus did as he laid his life down for us and as he uh, died on the cross for us. So uh, we'll sing a few songs, share some scripture, and celebrate communion together. And I know uh, you don't want to, to miss that. Hey, we have a wonderful team that works with our, our kids, and we have a lot of programs that are happening that you might not be aware of. Uh, one of those is a JBQ. It's called Junior Bible Quiz, and it's just, it's a tool, and it's a way, it's a method, it's a help to get young kids um, learning God's Word. And uh, they had their, their finals for the state um, yesterday here at our, our campus here, and Actually, uh, Vivek Sandela leads the, for the entire state, the Assemblies of God Churches in the state, leads that program. 
Vivek, you are awesome. You're wonderful. Thank you for leading that for the whole state. And then Sam, uh, Samiksha, I'm not sure where Samiksha is, Sam Estrada. Okay, over here. All right, great. They lead it here, and, and so they're going to come and just uh, share with us. We're going to celebrate our own kids and uh, their accomplishments from, from this season. This is Shrada, everybody. Good morning, church. Uh, my name is Shrada, as Pastor Tim mentioned. Come, come, come closer. Yeah. So, um, so we have two teams, um, the Lord's Army, team number one, uh, and I'm the head coach uh, for them. So that's my team, and your name is? Daniel. Jaria. Right, and um, I have another team, the Lord's Army, team two, and her name is? Agnes. And Nathan. Yeah, and uh, they are led by Sharon. Unfortunately, she could not be with us in the morning. I mean, she could not be with us. And uh, okay, so this week has been amazing. And uh, uh, you know, I think last Friday it was the, we had an amazing talent show. Um, I was so amazed. I mean, Stephanie and uh, Joe did an amazing job. So I was just so amazed to see so many kids, you know, using their God-given talents to glorify God. And uh, Yesterday was uh, another great event that we had in Evangel Chapel. So we had uh, the JBQ District Finals here, and uh, so many kids, I mean, so many kids had participated at different levels. So we had two levels, basically. So we had the Achievers level and the Masters level. So our kids were at the Masters level. And, uh, you know, all these kids, as I said, you know, they are using their God-given talents to memorize so many questions I mean, I would be very honest with you. They know more, you know, Bible verses than me. I'm like, they know like for more than 500 questions and they compete against, you know, different churches and different teams. And I should say that they did an amazing job. And um, so I'm just so proud of them. Yes, so proud of them. Yes. So, um, so yeah, Evangel Chapel 2, that's... Um, uh, Nathan and uh, there is another team member. His name is Timothy. So Timothy, Agnes, and uh, Nathan, they are in uh, team two, and they were placed at the fifth place in the master's level. So that's amazing. Yes. And uh, Daniel and Shoria, again, they competed again in the master's level, and they were placed third position. So that's again amazing. Yeah. And um, so uh, it, when we talk about an individual quizzing level, so I would just have to look here because, you know. So Shoria was, uh, I'm sorry, Agnes was placed in the 17th position. That's her. And this is her first time quizzing. You know, she's, she's just amazing. She's just getting there, you know. So she's, she was placed, yeah, on the 17th position. And Shoria, who also is, I think, the third year, I guess, so he was placed in the 11th position, and Timothy, he's not here, so he was 9th position, Nathan 8th, and Daniel was the top quizzer for the district finals 2024 season, and that's from Evangel Chapel. So that's amazing. All of them, they're just, they're so great. I'm so proud of them all. Yeah. And uh, so now our Evangel Chapel team one would be, you know, heading to, we've been, we, we qualified to... Uh, to go for the nationals at uh, Springfield, Virginia this April. And hopefully from there, we might be able to make it to nationals. So please keep us all in your prayers. And um, uh, I also wanted to say that, um, you know, um, if in case you have any questions about JBQ, Junior Bible Quiz, and if you're interested in that, uh, you know, you may leave your information or you may either contact me or Sam, and we'd be so happy to assist you with anything. And lastly, I would like to thank Pastor Tim for opening the, you know, church for the event. Thank you so much for your encouragement. And I would also like to thank all the parents. Uh, you know, they've been so helpful, so cooperative, you know, you know, in doing different stuff for us. And also, I'd like to, you know, I'm so proud of them. I'd like to congratulate them once again. And thank you so much for everything. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. You guys are wonderful, and we, we do celebrate them. We celebrate their efforts, and if you've been here at the church, thank you, guys. Um, 
they're here at the church many times. If you're driving by and the lights are on, it's probably the Bible quiz team that's here, like, uh, like uh, studying and competing. Um, I know Shraddha mentioned uh, Friday night. On Friday night, we do a ministry to the kids. Uh, we call it Kid Zone, and it's mostly every Friday night. And uh, Joe and Stephanie lead that, do a great job, and just have an event that we did this past weekend that Shraddha mentioned that was so great, and uh, have some more details about that. Good job, guys. We did JBQ with our oldest daughter, and it's not easy. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, Friday night we had a talent show here for the kids, and it was it was awesome. It was any talent. We told them any talent that you have, bring, and they brought it, and it was it was so fun. And we had uh, singing, dancing, worship, hula hoop, jump rope, ninja moves, Chicken chickens doing tricks, uh, Irish jig. It was it was awesome. <laughs> It was awesome. It was awesome. So, um, and right now we're in the season of uh, something called fine arts. It's an AG thing. So um, we really, really, really want to get you guys excited for it. Because I know sometimes if you don't see something, you don't really understand it. So I want to try to explain a little bit of what it is. Um, it's kind of like a big giant talent show, but it's very, uh, it's the whole state of New Jersey. And they all come together. Um, this year it's going to be in um, Monmouth. Uh, it's, yeah, it's on there. Uh, Marble, New Jersey, Monmouth Worship Center. So it used to just be 6th grade to 12th grade. Now they opened it up for 1st uh, grade to 5th grade also. So that's called Fun Arts. So that's for the younger kids. It's a little more lax. Um, but they come. They, they have um, online. There's a, like rules. And all the categories you can think of. I mean, anything that's artistic. There's, there's uh, vocals, there's singing, there's all kinds of things. And we'll direct you to the website so you can look. But even my own daughter was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And I said, no, there's something. So I said, listen, they have uh, Instagram Reels designing and T-shirt designing. So she was like, oh, I can do that. So there's something for everybody. And it's so amazing. I, I'm going to explain it to you, but you have to see it. But it is I'll, I cry every time I talk about it because you're seeing thousands of kids sharing gifts that they maybe didn't even know they had. Um, and they're, they're being taught to use it for the Lord. They're being encouraged by seeing the other kids. They're being encouraged by church family coming to see them. You don't even have to have a child if you want to come and just support them and cheer them on while they're performing. And it's, it's so encouraging to them. It's really, really, really amazing. So... Um, Joe will tell you about how to get the information, but I really encourage you, like, just give it a shot. You have, like, a week to register still and look through everything, uh, but it's really good, and I'm, we're pretty sure, we'll, we'll verify, but our daughter, our older daughter did it, and they're able to receive scholarships and everything, so it's district level here, and there's judges. Really, the point of the judging is to help them sharpen their skills. They give them feedback. They're explaining to them what they can, can do better. And uh, so they're watching all of that and hearing feedback. And, and they're, they do grow. They do grow. So it's really great. Yeah, so to uh, sign up, uh, Tammy did an amazing job this morning. I texted her at 9 o'clock this morning, and she already has a QR code out front. She has printouts, and it's up on the app. If you go to announcements, you can go right to the app. It's already up there. Um, and it says that you can contact us, which means her. And <laughs> we will be sending an email out very soon, very soon. This is for fun arts. For fine arts, Melissa Pampani has already sent an email out, I think on March 1st. Um, so she would be a good contact for fine arts. If you have questions, we've done fine arts, so you can ask us as well. Um, so QR code out front. We'll send an email. You can contact us. And either way, um, what's that? I just want to say one more thing. Uh, just so you know, the actual day of the festival is April 27th. So just to keep that in mind. And if you don't mind, I just want to read a couple of the categories, like some of the categories. The visual arts, photography, poetry, short story, short sermon, spoken word, American Sign Language, human video, drama, dance, and they can do it by themselves, they can do it in groups, vocal, solo, vocal, so, vocal groups, worship team, instruments. And then as they get to the bigger, uh, the older grades, they add on t-shirt design, Instagram, filmmaking, book writing, essays, 
3D art. You can't imagine, you cannot imagine. You just go online and see, and you'll see everything that's, that's there. And one last thing, I just wanted to say, like Steph said, I was really, Friday was awesome, and it was really cool to see families come who didn't even have kids with the talent. They just came to watch, and I just thought that was awesome. They encouraged all the kids on, and that was one thing our, our oldest reminded us last night was that for fine arts, even though she was a singer for a few years, she just went and watched. The Latin gods would take her to go watch, and that got her to say, oh, well, I can do this. So maybe you guys want to just go. That registration doesn't end in a week. If you want to just go and watch, that registration stays open for a little while longer, and you just go, and it's a, it's a good day, a long day of a lot of performances to, to watch. It's a really fun day, and I hope you guys would enjoy it. Thank you, guys. You know, I love, love the theme, Never Bury Talent, and we want to start uh, showing these kids at a young age that they can use their gifts to honor and glorify the Lord. And that's what it's really about, that they would discover the gifts that God has given them and then really use them and direct them toward his honor. It's why we spend so much time. This isn't a commercial. This is, is to get us engaged and get you engaged and your kids and the people that you know and that you can support them. Friday night was amazing. These kids weren't just showing talents. They were worshiping the Lord. They really were. It was really true. And uh, if we're, we're going to reach this generation, we're going we're gonna to do all that we can to uh, guide them and direct them toward the Lord. So thank you guys. And there's, there's so many leaders that are working with kids and, and teams that it requires teams to work with these kids. And so we're, we're excited for each one of them and thankful to each one of them. And thank you for, for giving to the Lord through your church. We just uh, love that we get to be a blessing around the world. I said it to the first service that we, any cause that you might be passionate about, there's a missionary somewhere that we support that helps in that area. Let's say that you are passionate about rescuing girls, um, and we have a missionary in Spain that we've sent money to and helped uh, build a safe house so that rest, girls could be rescued and taken to that safe house. We help build wells in different places. I mean, in all those ways of sharing the gospel at the same time around the world. When we tell you 24-7, 365, it's happening. And we don't neglect our backyard. We continue to give emphasis to that. So thank you so much for, for giving. I love the church. I love God's church. I love the church. And Jesus is the hope of the world, but he has a church, right, to, to carry that forward. And so together we're helping um, see his kingdom built here and around the world. So thank you for partnering with us, us doing this together so that people can, can know the hope of Jesus. Resurrection, we celebrate it every week. We celebrate every week. He's alive, and everybody needs to know the hope that's found in him. So thank you for, for doing that. Um, if you have your Bibles and you'd like, you can turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And uh, we're going to look at another little section. If you haven't been here, we're working our way through this letter uh, from uh, the Apostle Paul to this church in Corinth. And uh, this is the last chapter. He's, he's kind of wrapping up his thoughts, but we're still able to glean and gather some important uh, principles to apply to our, our lives, even though he's kind of winding down the letter. It's not it's not that he's just saying, oh, and by the way, and by the way, these are, these are important things for us to hear uh, and to learn from. So today we're going to look at verses 5 uh, to 9. Uh, before I read that, uh, how many of you uh, are your vacation planners, like, and you have to have every detail covered before you go? Like, all, everything organized, everything laid out, the schedule, the times. Raise your, I want to know who you are. Okay, so we know who all the organized, like, we're going to place you in a certain role in ministry because that's how you are. And uh, some of us are not like that. I'm one of the people that I love to make the plans. Um, I love to do all the research. But then when I'm there, I just want to, okay, we're going we're gonna to be guided. If we go here, we go there. If we go here, the other place, we'll go the other place. Um, that's not always been able to be accomplished on the ones that I've kind of planned. Um, but we, my wife and I had gotten away together and... Uh, to the island of Aruba it was for our anniversary, 10-year anniversary, and um, it was the best vacation ever because we got to, like, I was researched everything about that little island, and uh, we were able to, to drive around and do all, because I love to do, st like, I love to go. I'm, like, on a mission when I'm there. It's not just about sitting. Like, I want to discover and explore, and my wife on vacation, just sit. That's all you want to do, sit. 
So um, we, it was wonderful. We were able to balance both. Like in the morning, we'd go out and we'd explore, and then we'd sit on the beach until the sun went down, and uh, then go to. It was it was a great trip. But each of us liked to plan our our lives, plan our vacations a little bit differently, and we're reading, you're going to hear Paul talking about, we're getting a little insight into how he makes plans. And there's going to be some some important things that we can glean from this for our own lives as we follow the Lord. So would you follow along with me as I pick up at verse 5 in chapter 16? Uh, This is Paul writing to that that church in Corinth. After I go through Macedonia, um, I will come to you, for I'm going to be going through Macedonia. Perhaps I will stay with you for a while, or even spend the winter, so that you can help me out on my journey wherever I go. For I do not want to see you now and make only a passing visit. I hope to spend some time with you, if the Lord permits. Somebody repeat that phrase with me, if the Lord permits. But I will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost because a great door for effective work has opened to me. Somebody say great door. Has opened to me. And there are many, and we've got to put a little emphasis on that and, and there are many who oppose me. Now, Paul isn't planning his vacation. At least we don't think so. I don't know that he's planning a trip to Corinth in the winter. Um, But he is planning his schedule. He's planning some details for the next period of time in his life. And when I read that, I can read it a couple different ways. And I know you probably haven't read it before you got here. This might be the first time you've heard this or read this or it's landed in in a long time. But as I read that, I kind of read it two different ways. One is I'm hearing a a little bit of ambiguity in his plans. He says kind of like perhaps, maybe, you know, possibly, I want to, I desire to. So there's this, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I have some plans laid down, but I'm not sure. And so you can kind of, well, does he even know what, where he's going? Is God directing him anywhere? Is he just vacillating back and forth or, or, you know, what's the deal? I read it in one sense in that regard. On the other hand, I also read it by saying, really giving emphasis to that, that one phrase. Okay, Paul's saying, I got all these plans. I'm putting some things down on paper. I'm making some, some scheduling. I'm calling some people. I'm texting some people. I'm making, like, setting some things up. But, but, I put all that under, under God's plans. I submit all those under his plans because I've got all these desires. I have these, these plans and these purposes if the Lord permits. If the Lord permits. What is he saying? He's saying, um, what does God want me to do? You're asking. He's not saying he's asking that question. What does God want me to do? Where does God want me to go? You know, I actually think that's a great way to walk through life. A great way to walk through life. Paul says, okay, here's what I I desire to do. Here's what I have planned. Here's where I I think I'm going to go. Here's what what I want to do. But it's all subject to God's will. It's all subject to God's purposes for my life. Paul wants to make sure that he's giving plenty of room, that he's giving permission to what God desires, that he's giving um, submission to God's will and God's purposes for his life. I think that's a great way to walk through life. For you and I to say, okay, here are my plans. Here's all the stuff I got laid out in my, my Google calendar. Here's all the stuff... That, that I would love to see happen this year, accomplish this year. But all of those are if the Lord permits. Um, I've grown up in, in church my whole life. And for many years, I don't know if it's old school, maybe it's old school, but the churches that I were part of, everybody would say, they would add to the end of a phrase, if the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, if the Lord wills. It was kind of strange to me, but what these folks I just call them the old school folks. Like, they had this understanding, right, that their lives weren't just guided according to their plans. They were guided according to God's plans. 
So they would say, if the Lord, like, it was somewhat joking, but they would do it over. It was almost part of their language. It was part of their understanding. And, and I think you and I sometimes forget that. We forget that, yes, we're going to make our plans, but we, they are surrendered and submitted to God's will. How many of you want God's will for your life? How many of you want to surrender your plans and your purposes to his desire? Do we care about what God cares for our life? Do you care about God's will for your life? I think we would say yes to that. I would hope we would say yes to that. Do you care about God's desire for your career? Do you care about God's desire for the person that you marry, the house or the neighborhood that you live in, the school that your kids go to, the the job that you stay at or the job that you change? All of those kinds of choices and decisions, do you want God's desire for those? Do you want his preference for those? Do you think God cares about those choices for your life? I would say as Christians, we would say yes. And, and these old folks would always add on that, if, if the Lord wills, my life, I have plans and I have desires and a purpose, if the Lord permits it, if the Lord allows it. What were they saying? Well, if God takes me there, if God allows that, if God permits that. And when I was in West Virginia, they would say, if the Lord wills and the creek don't rise. Anybody ever heard that? Actually, I think in West Virginia, they said the crick, the crick. If the Lord wills and the crick don't, you know, that's crick or creek. Anybody know that? Like, have you heard the word crick? Yes. Oh, man, I'm like, all right. You know, as Christians, we believe that God has, has preferences for our individual lives. That, that when we say, I submit my life or surrender my life to your will, it's that God wants to lead us and guide us in certain direction and has preferences for the choices that we make. Don't ever tell your spouse, I could have married 10 different people. Don't ever tell your spouse that. I did that. <laughs> I did do that. I don't know if I, maybe I didn't tell you that. That was, that was silly. <laughs> that was, and it was, you know, I was like right out of college and like studying the Bible and like understand so the complexities of God's will and his sovereignty and his guidance and his leadership. I could have, and it's my wife now, right? We weren't, we weren't married. I could, I could marry 10 people. Or, you know, 10, there's 10 different people that God could have for me that I could make a choice. And I was t- like, to this day, to this day, that's like, we've not gotten over that one. We've not worked our way through that one. Like, still to this day. <laughs> I've learned a thing or two about marriage. <laughs> and I've learned a thing or two about God's will and God's purposes. You know, God does desire. He does have preferences for us. And sometimes they're different for you than they're different for me. And he wants to lead us and guide us. And I want to be able to say always, listen, we're we're Jersey, right? We rush through life. We're fast moving, moving, moving. And things are constantly happening. And we're filling up our our calendars. We're filling up our lives. And we got these purposes and we plans like and and desires. And have we stopped and have we, have we said, Lord, I, I desire this if this is your will, if this is your will? Do you have some choices that you're making, you're currently, like, working through? Do you have some plans for this week? Do you have some plans for this year, for this season of your life? Have you stopped and said, well, Lord, I, I want this, or I desire this, or I think that, but ultimately, I desire your will? Have, have you said that? Um, Paul gives us, he operates according to to a principle of submitting himself to to God's direction for his personal life and and choices like that. Before we look at that from him, I think it's helpful for us that that word God's will is certainly complex, and I could talk to you one-on-one. I'd love to do that, but let's answer the question how God leads us through life, and then we'll come back to, to his principle that he, how does God lead us. I believe that God leads us through life and desires to lead us through life. You as well? We believe that. How does God lead us through, through life? Well, let, let's remind ourselves of a couple things. Number one, God leads us through life by his word. Like, you don't have to be in the dark about a lot of things. You don't have to be in the dark. He's actually given us the, a lot of answers to the questions that we may have, and they're found right here in, in his word, the word that you have on a page in front of you. 
There are things that he's told us that, that um, will help us go left or go right. There are things that he's told us that will help us know what's right and what's wrong. He has given us do's and don'ts. And sometimes we don't like to hear those, but he does. He's given us do's and don'ts, and you start there. Start by following those. And you're going to have a lot of questions that you may have in life answered already from his word. And by the way, let me remind you, there's, there's a lot of things. Uh, you've probably encountered people like this, and you go to them, and you might ask them a question. They're, they're going through something, and they just got to pray about it over and over. I got to pray about it. I got to pray. There are some things that you do not need to pray about. They're already answered for you. There are, you, don't need to, you don't need to try to work through those or discern those. God's already told you in his word. Go find where he's told you in his word. He's already given you the answer. Should I hook up with my girlfriend? No. I mean, the answer's already there. You don't have to, like, work through that and process your feelings. Well, your emotions. You don't, like, it's already answered for you. Should I cheat on my taxes? It's already answered for you. It's already answered for you. That day, that's coming real soon, right? I know we don't want to give them, we don't want to give what we don't have to give, but we're not cheaters and we're not thieves. So there's so much that sometimes we think, oh, i gotta, I got to pray about it, i got to work through it. How much time do you need? Just go find out what God's word says and do what it says. A lot of your life is going to be guided and directed according to the things that he's already said in your word, and it's going to alleviate some of the struggle that you think you have. Just follow what he says. He wants to lead us on paths of righteousness. He wants to lead us on paths of right living, and he's given us the way he's shown us. He's told us. And so a lot of your your struggle, a lot of your challenge can be reduced. It can be reduced just by following his word and doing what he says. If we read his word, if we hear his word, if we obey his word, if we obey his word, We're going to naturally walk the path that he desires us to walk. We're going to naturally walk down it. It's going to happen almost automatic because he's given us so much of what he already desires that we can walk and and like have a confidence as we walk through life. His, His word, this word says about itself, it says his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. You feel like you're in the dark? Walking through life, spinning in circles, you don't need to. What you need to do is you need to pick up his word and say, God, I need to be directed to where the answer is. I know you have the answer, and I'm going to follow what you say. We want to be led and guided through life. Like, and, and we say, I'm, I'm surrendering and submitting to your will. We have to start with his word. And some of that's the do's and the don'ts. And a lot of times, you're going to be frustrated. And you're going to feel like you're spinning in circles because you haven't dealt with one of the do's or the don'ts that he's already said. And I promise you, this is what I've, I've learned, that a lot of times God wants to work on the do's and the don'ts that you're not working on before he takes you to the next step. So you may, you may spin in circles for a while. And I think that's part of the children of Israel when they were stuck in the wilderness, just going around in circles before they entered the promised God was, God was shaping them and forming them and teaching them things before they moved into the promised land. And it's the same with your life. There's, if, you, if there are some clear things that you are, are doing or not doing, that God desires for you, he's going to want to get those taken care of before you move on. So I, I think it's helpful to say, Lord, is there something? Like frequently, Lord, is there something that, that, that is there some area in my life, is, is there uh, something habitual that, that's out of your plans or desires that I'm doing a part of over and over, and, and I'm rationalizing that away? We're Jersey, we're, you, well, you're smart. I might not be smart. You're smart. You're educated. We're a well-educated population. And you can rationalize away a ton of things. Go back to, go back to God's word and, and, and deal with those first before you move on. Now, you've got to get that one right, his word and the do's and the don'ts. Not only does he give us those, but he gives us in his word principles so sometimes you'll be walking through life and it'll be a gray area and the, you say, man, the Bible doesn't tell me anything. His word doesn't say anything. Well, what you find is that a lot of the choices or decisions you need to make, you're going to find the answer and the direction that you need in the principles from God's word. So he gives you principles to apply to your life or to apply to the decision that you need to made, make, the direction that you need to go. An example, like the, there's the principle of sowing and reaping like that we read in Scripture in multiple places. You reap what you 
so, right? That's not just, just maybe unique to the Bible, but there's certainly a principle from there, from God's word that he shares even elaborates on that. We hear it in multiple places. Galatians 6 says, whoever sows to their flesh, to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. So there's the application of that sowing and reaping to, to our lives. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. So you'll come up against decisions or choices, and there's principles from God's word. Um, another one would be that, like from James, who says we're, we should be um, quick to listen and slow to speak. That's a pretty good principle to operate under and to live by. And, and you might not think this relates to choices and decisions you make. But man, I think maybe if you kept your mouth shut a little bit longer... I'll talk to myself too. I like if you kept your mouth shut a bit longer and listened a little, or, you know, a little quicker and listened a little longer, maybe you would hear not only God but the things that He's speaking from people around you. But we're so quick to talk. Like we're, I don't know why I'm stuck on Jersey people today. Like we're just like we, you're gonna talk, but, 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 but like like we talk fast and get it over with, right? We're quick to talk, quick to respond, quick to respond, 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 respond. We don't listen. I saw. Uh, a meme, I don't know if it was a meme, but one of those little graphics you see them all the time. Like the difference between a sponge and a brick. And a brick, you know, imagine a brick, and it's just always splashing back if you poured water on it, right? If you, it's always splashing back, and it's, we always want to respond. We always want to talk. We always want to talk, and a sponge soaks up, right? The principle from God's word is that, that it's a great principle to live by. And as you make decisions and, and are making choices in your life, I'm going to be, I'm going to be slow to speak, and I'm going to be quick to listen. Now, God's word, that's number one. If you want to be led and guided and directed in life, like you got to, you got to get this one right. you got to go there. you got to start there. you got to go back there. He wants to lead us and he wants to guide us. Number one is through his word. Number two is that he, he does lead us um, and guide us in life through his people, through his people. And um, I've experienced this. When I've had to make choices or make decisions, I've gone to, to God's people. I've gone to the people around me in, in my circle who were followers of the Lord, who loved the Lord, and, and I asked them. I gave them, put the, the question or the challenge in front of them and listened and listened to their, their feedback and listened to their responses. I love this uh, verse from Proverbs. This is from the Amplified Version, Proverbs 11, where there is no wise or intelligent guidance The people fall and go off course like a ship without a helm. But in the abundance, in the abundance of wise and godly counselors, there's victory. Well, I want victory in life. You do too, right? I want to walk successfully down that that path of life in honoring the Lord. And this is a reminder that in, in a multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. And, and if we're willing to operate by the principle of listening, and then I'm going to go to the body of Christ, I'm going to go to his, his church, and I'm going to hear uh, the, the wisdom that God is placing around me, that's going to help us walk and be guided into God's best for us. Now, um, a lot of times what happens, though, is we go to the people that, that we want to affirm our actions or our desires, and that's not, what, that's not what this means. You're going to go to godly and intelligent and wise counsel, and it's not always the person that's your best friend. A lot of times that person's going to, going to affirm and going to, going to be on your side all the time. You got, it's, I love it. It's a multitude of counselors. It's a multitude. There, there's people that have different opinions and different experiences that are further down the road in you and their maturity and their walk with the Lord. And when you go and you get that data and that information then you can, it helps you. It helps you make wise decisions. And utilizing God's people around you is, is so important. Just don't get the ones that you know are going to give you the answer that you want and feel like you've done, like, checked off the box. You've got to be able to listen to the people that are going to give you pushback, that are going to give you correction, that are going to see things from a different perspective and tell you maybe a different way. That then you can say, okay, Lord, how, what are you showing me? What's the wisdom that you're showing me in this? So we can certainly use his people. In fact, 
um, Paul, remember we're working through Corinthians, and Paul talks about the body of Christ and talks about us edifying each other when we come together and building each other up. And, and he talks about us having words of wisdom for other people. And that I believe, and it's happened to me, that God can give you something that, that he's put in your heart, like the Spirit of God speaks to you, and I need to hear it, and you tell it to me. And it's, it's the very thing that I need to hear. Like there's, there's amazing power in the body of Christ. There's amazing help and wisdom in the body of Christ, and we need to, to certainly utilize that. And it's a way that God helps us be guided and directed in life. Uh, third, God um, leads us and guides us through life through his spirit. So it's through his word, it's through his people, and it's through his spirit by way of prayer. Now, if you are, have given your life to Jesus... If you have made him the Lord of your life, confessed your sin, turned and repented, and following him, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. His spirit. When Jesus left, he said, I'm leaving, but I'm not leaving you alone. I'm leaving my spirit to indwell you. And so you and I, who are followers of Jesus, have his spirit inside of us. So um, the word, God's word, is something external, if you will. It's external. His spirit is inside of us. And there's something powerful when you put those two things together. You put his word and his spirit together, and boom, you're going to have the answers. You're going to have the direction that you need. God's spirit will illuminate his word and help guide you through the very thing that you need. His word and his spirit are work powerfully together. And Jesus, when he left, he's talking to the disciples, and he said, listen, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm coming. I'm going to give you the advocate. And one of the things that he says about the Spirit is the Spirit is going to guide us into all truth. He's going to guide us into what's right. He's going to guide us into right living. So you not only have his word, you not only have people around you, you have his Spirit inside of you. And as you pray, as you pray and as you commune, as you sit with the Lord, as you spend that time, as you're in that, that talking to the Lord and listening to the Lord. He, he impresses things inside of you. He'll, he'll highlight something on, on a page of, of Scripture that you said, that's exactly what I need, and, and it, almost like, it almost like beats inside of you. He'll, he'll do things like, by way of his Spirit, like impress something on you. Like you'll feel like you can't just get, you just can't get away from it. It's almost like becomes an obsession for you. Some, the language, the old school language we would have used like a burden. He's given me a burden like it's some, some direction that, that I need to go, some, something that I have to go after that, that just I can't, I can't go off of it. It's sort of like OCD, like spiritual OCD. But, but if you have like diagnosed OCD, I feel for you. Like I understand, that's, that's difficult. Um, my wife has a version of OCD. Um, with a, We both have our obsessions. She has a version that... Um, has to check the stove every night. Like, and like a couple hours, did I shut off the stove? Yes, we shut off. Like, we would know if there's flames coming out of the gas stove. Like, and every night, lights off and check, 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 check. Check to every burner, every burner. You can't do two burners. You got to do every burner. Like, and like, and unplug the toaster oven. Why is that the only thing in the house we have to unplug? The toaster oven. And my son's a firefighter. He probably said yes. He probably told her one time the toaster ovens burn houses down. So like, Every night, every night, toaster oven. I come and you have to set the clock on the toaster oven every morning. Like, I don't want to have to set the clock. <laughs> but it's like, you, like, it's like, for, like for her, it's like over and over. I have to. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to go there. It's the iron, too, the iron. Did you unplug the iron? Did you unplug the iron? <laughs> it's only those couple things. What, what I'm saying is this, is that God, like, spiritually, like his spirit inside of us will, will like burden us with it. He'll put these things that we can't get away from and they'll keep popping up and they'll keep popping up and he'll say, I have to go here. I have to do this. I have to give to this. I have to research that. Like that's how he leads us and guides us. It's his spirit inside of us. Spirit is alive. Jesus is alive and he's alive by way of his spirit inside of us and he leads us and he guides us in that way. And, and then finally, finally he leads us through like what Paul's talking about. He leads us through circumstances. And for Paul, it's almost like what the language we would use today is the open and closed doors. So Paul is, is being guided in his plans 
he, sur- he submitted to God's will. But now as, as it gets a little more micro, he's saying, okay, well, God, I see an opportunity here. I see a door open here. And I have these plans. And I'm even telling some people my plans. But I'm also saying, if the Lord permits. If the Lord permits. It's really the principle of open doors and closed doors. It's kind of what Paul is doing with his life. It's how he's being guided and directed in this moment. And you know what that tells me? This is actually comforting in some way. Um, We shouldn't land here, but it's something that we can be at ease with a little bit, is that God's, like, that personal will, those micro choices, it's not always clear and obvious. Like, he's saying, perhaps, maybe, I think, I'm not sure, I could, I might spend the winter, like, that's, as I read it, but he doesn't land there, he doesn't stay there. So he says, okay, yes, I have plans, I have desires, if the Lord permits, if the Lord wants it. If the Lord desires it, then, then it's as if Paul's saying, I know that God's going to open up the door. I'm going to see the opportunity. God's going to illuminate the opportunity for me at the right time, at the, the right exact moment, and I'm going to be able to walk through that door. Paul said, I'm going I'm to stay here. I'm going to stay here because a very effective, he says, a great door. He saw something that was happening. He was using his, his wisdom, his own intelligence, and he wasn't like all chaotic about it. It was like, okay, yes, I could, I might. It just depends on what God wants. And he saw it, and he said, so I'm going to stay in Ephesus because an effective opportunity happened. I'm not going to get back to Corinth. I'm going to have to go this way, that way, and the other way. I'm sorry if that offends you, but this, and these are my plans now. God's going to I'm going to stay here. And you can read about what happened because that, that effective door in Acts chapter 19, amazing things happen. As, as Paul is in Ephesus, open doors. Here's something else we learned about open doors. Like the ones that God illuminates and we walk through them always give us opportunity for, for ministry, always give us opportunity to build his kingdom. Like so when you're making the choices about who you marry, about your neighborhood, about the neighborhood, about the house, about the job, career, the people you're around, like, God has purpose way bigger many times than you might imagine for those, those, those yeses and those doors that he opens. He wants you, like, he, we are partners with him in building his kingdom. So I know people. I had a, a worked over the summer an internship with a, with a guy who, um, he was a children's pastor, helped out with kids. And he literally left, like, literally believed God called him to a specific neighborhood in Pittsburgh, one of the worst spots. Believe that God called him and his family to move there. Why would you, like, God was, was guiding him. He was praying about and believing, and God opened up opportunities for, for building his work by where God's work, where he was deciding uh, to move with his life. That's kind of what Paul's doing. He's, he's saying, listen, I'm going to look for the opportunities that God, God brings, the doors that he opens. Now here. Another, another thought about open and closed doors. All these work together. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to go door, 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 not door. Like, you're going to be going to drive you crazy. Open door, not open door. Like, you can't just be there. Like, these all work together. Because sometimes people, like, they'll face opposition and think that it's, maybe that's a closed door or something that's difficult. And they'll think, well, God's closing that door. That's not always the case. What does Paul say? He said, that it was a, what an amazing door got open. And yet, behind that same door, what did he face? Opposition. He faced challenge. He faced difficulty. So sometimes we think, okay, God's taking me this direction, and then it looks a little sketch. It looks a little difficult. It looks a little challenging. And we're like, nah, nope, not my door. It's not, we can't always say that. How do you know? Like you told us open, how do you know? Well, we have all these other options. We have God's word. We have the wisdom. We have his spirit. All these things work together. But just because something's difficult doesn't mean that it's God's door. And a lot of times, a lot of times, you've probably seen this as well, that what God wants to do something pretty amazing in your life, it's uh, opposition is right alongside of it. Difficulty and challenge is right there. They are, they are behind the same door. They are on the same path. not apply this just to to ministry but even even like your job or in your life like you want to I want to do the right thing I want to honor the Lord in my work I want I want to you know be ethical or just go down the list of the you I'm desiring to do this in my my world isn't it always the case that's where you then the criticism comes and the challenge comes 
God is, God is doing something bigger in our lives. Yes, he's directing us. He's leading us down these paths, and it's always way bigger, so don't just see opposition as your opportunity to go the other direction. Opportunity or Opposition may be right alongside of the opportunity that God wants to walk you through. You put these together, and it's, it's, um, it's a wonderful way to live. It really is, because... Following God's will isn't like just like walking on a tightrope, like an, oh my goodness, I might fall off. And what if I take a step this direction? It's not God's, here's what I, I love and I was reminded. I can be confident and sure that if I've surrendered my life and my will and my plans to God, he is going to lead me into his purposes. He is. You can be confident in that. I saw this video, a cat video. You watch cat videos? No. It was a cat like walking on the top of a, sorry. It was a cat walking on the top of a, get back to the notes. It was like, that was a cat walking on top of a, 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 a pole, a swing set. Yes, I told them first, swing set. And like, it was like trying to hold on and slipping and sliding. And sometimes like, that's not what following God is like. That's not what following is surrendering to his will. You can be confident walking in life with him. You can be confident any door that he opens, he is going to walk you through it. He's going to carry you through it all the way to the effectiveness and the purpose that he desires. And it doesn't, if he opens a door, no man can shut it. No man, no criticism, nothing can shut it. So you just walk through that door confidently and purposely. And if it's stay, it's stay. If it's go, it's go. God is guiding you and is directing you. And I think I walk away from reading these verses again and say, that's the way I want to live my life. I'm making my plans, but Lord, if you desire something different, you'll show me the way, and I'm going to keep walking forward. What a way to live. What a wonderful way to live. I would say be encouraged. If you're one of those people who's going to say, yes, this week, my plans, these are mine, but I'm giving them to the Lord, then you walk out of here as sure as you could be that God is going to guide you and direct you. As sure as you can possibly be. What a, what a worry-free way to live. What, a, what an anxious, free way to live. To be confident that if the Lord has you take a step or not take a step, that it's, it's, it's on Him. And I don't mean like, it's on you. Like, it's on you. It's a little bit of that. I've done that a couple of times. Lord, it's on you. I've done that. Anybody else done that? Like, you've done that, right? But, but I think we can have confidence, right? Lord, this is in your hands. And if it's stay... It's going to be good. If it's yes, it's going to be no. I'm, I don't want to vacillate. I just want to keep walking forward. Lord, you're going to illuminate the door that I need. You're going to show the direction. Praying this with, with my kids, my oldest son graduating college, and now job interviews, and like, we're going to just keep walking forward. God might not just say, boom, here it is. He's going to lead you and guide you. He might give you some choices. Not in marriage, but he's going to give you some choices maybe in a job. Because <laughs> he, he, he got an offer, and he was like, I might, it's, I, it's the first interview I went, it's the first offer. I might want to explore the territory. It's like confidence that God is going to lead us and guide us. Walking through assured, assuredly, that's probably not a word. I think it's a word. I'm just using it the wrong way. Sure, sure that God has got my next step. Sure that if he needs to move me in a direction this way or that way, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. You think God cares about you that little and he's up there just looking, ah, let them go their own way. No, God is with you. God's beside you. God is for you. God has those good purposes and those good plans. He wants to walk you into those. Just And it's almost, I don't like to say it's formulaic, but man, there's some principles here that you can just walk with confidence. I'm in your word. I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm doing my best to, to follow you, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the do's and the don'ts, and, and I'm not perfect, but I'm going to keep moving forward. I've got my, my network around me. I've got good people around me. How can you and I go wrong following him? How can we be steered in the wrong direction? Oh, run across that tightrope. Run across it. If you slip, you slip. If you go this, then, then God's going to use that for, for your best and for his purposes. No doubt about that. And even if you've been off track, you think you've been off track and running the opposite way. Oh, man, God already knew that. God already knew that and is ready to turn you right in another direction and put you right back on course. And, and that, in some ways, is part of his desire plans, too. He's going to take that mess that you made, and he's going to work all that out. Come on, we serve a wonderful God. 
We serve a God who loves us and cares about us deeply. And we don't have to just sit and wonder. Make the plans. You planners, raise your hand. You planners? No, you don't have to raise your hand. You planners? Like, put your details. Put it down. Your calendars and your, I've gone through 14 of those things. I can't get the one that sticks for me. You know, I got all kinds of versions. Spent $69.95 on the last one. <laughs> put those details down. But every day it's, Lord, I'm surrendered to you. I'm surrendered to your will and to your plans. And I walk away confident. Would you stand with me and let's pray. Let's pray and let's, let's sing that song we sang earlier because it's sort of like what, what um, I know we're not talking about Palm Sunday from the scriptures, but it's very closely related, I think. Because what, you know, a lot of people said, the king, the king, the king, and they weren't, you know, they're a little, little, little messed up in what they understood about what that king was going to do. And so when we're celebrating Hosanna, we are saying, you are, you are king and you are Lord of our lives. And I fall down before you. I surrender to you. My, my whole life, it starts my life in, in the macro ways, and then it's down to the, to the micro ways, the details. I surrender all my plans to you. Your purposes are best. Your ways are best. And I'm confident you're going to walk, walk me through those. And we're going to sing. I'm going to pray. We're going to sing this song. And I invite you, if, there, if you need to say, Lord, I, I surrender this little piece or, or my plans, I'm going to do it. Spend that time in prayer. Get on your knees in front of him and say, Lord, I fall down again. And I'm gonna, I know that I can, can uh, walk in your plans. And if you're, if you're vacillating, get on your knees again and say, Lord, I'm going to get up from my knees confident that, that you're walking me into your plans and your purposes. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you that you are, have come to us. We thank you that you've not left us alone. You've not left us on an island. Lord, you can give us confidence in the purposes that, that you have for us. And Lord, we are confident that you will walk us into those. And Lord, we will do all that you have for us because you are our shepherd and you're our leader and our guide. You are Hosanna. You're our king. We fall before you. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing this.